Dechrai. Dechrai means to start, ironically as this was the first word I noticed as a shape sensation. It had a raspy cat's tongue feel to me. It was a discomforting sound. I thought of all the things that gave me nails down the blackboard feelings, or for me, nails on unglazed pottery. Initially, I considered using needle felting, as the feel of felted objects gave me that sensation. After some experiments, I decided to use felt as an element, but not the star of the show. I ended up making a heavy, irregular chain for a neck piece. I deliberately gave no attention to how each link would interact with the next. The main piece was cut for me locally from Windfall and Beach by Paul from Isca Woodcrafts. I asked for a large tongue shape. I splintered the surface for that biting lolly stick sensation before varnishing it. The felted aspect went through several false starts, side tufts and so on, before I settled on a mat in colours I hate together, brown, rust and yellow, beneath the wood for the itchy jumper on skin aspect. A complete frustration at the not right look of the piece led to me shredding some of the felting wool and accidentally discovering exactly how to finish it. I needle loose wool into the mat so it sticks out from every angle, perfect for the fluffy, tickling, irritant feeling I wanted. Despite me setting out to make a super annoying, discordant piece, I really love how the finished necklace looks. Gwaur Gwaur is such a brilliantly macho, metal, roaring word, which translates to the very delicate word dawn. It's a big, stretching, roaring mouth to me and it was a difficult one to produce. I initially saw a kind of nod to breastplates, thinking of making something in polymer clay to paint in bronze. I wanted it to have fangs, and I wanted it to have a nod to the balance between the strength of the word and the fragility of the meaning, so I opted for glass for the fangs, which were handmade by local glassmaker Andrea of Dragon Art Glass. I had a number made so I could play with them, and of course accidentally wreck a couple in the process. After a few goes with polymer clay, I admitted defeat. It just wasn't giving the feel I wanted. I ended up going for a very spare design, simple silver hinged jaws with four glass fangs bezel set, two in each jaw. I strung the piece on soft gold leather that can be put over the head with no fastening. I'm really pleased with the final piece. It embodies the strength of the word in its shape and the fragility in its form and materials. Hoyle. Hoyle was the most straightforward of all the pieces to translate. It is a bright and shiny word, meaning a sense of energetic fun, or bai. I see it as a comet tail shape going to a bright point, swooping up from left to right, and I knew this would be gold. I decided to make it a brooch so the shape would stay exact. I did a test piece using silver wire, which helped me tweak the finished piece a bit. I exaggerated the comet-like tail a little in the finished piece. I cut the final piece from 9 karat gold sheet, made a stainless steel pin for strength and set a small 2mm diamond at the tip to exaggerate the pin point of brightness. Unbarod Unbarod is ready and is a really happy, triumphant, upward reaching shape to me. I instantly saw trumpeting upward growing forms and it made me then think of fungus and those speeded up nature films of them growing upwards from the forest floor. How then to mix the bright trumpetiness with that? I'm a very recent newcomer to wax carving, where a piece is carved in wax, then cast in metal. I decided to make Unbarod a ring that I would carve in wax. I wanted it to have a number of these upstretching trumpet mushrooms at different heights. I had three cast in silver, all given different finishes, and my favourite was covered in brightly coloured patterns, which I then scrubbed off. It looks like it was an old tin toy or ring that had been forgotten, and had somehow transmogrified into something else underground. The edges of the barrods are polished to highlight them. Tlugide. Tlugide means eyes, but to me, the word tlugide gives me the impression of flicking slime off my hand. It's very much linked to blue-green colours to me. I wanted to reflect that in the materials I used, and I considered resin for the wet look and knew I could make it look gloopy, but I wanted the piece to have a soft gooiness to it. I experimented with silicone, trying out shapes and colours, and I ended up making a double-ended pin in silver and stringing four worms of silicon in gradients of blue, green and length. The piece sits in an arc when fastened, allowing the silicon to droop satisfyingly. Feint. I am glad I hadn't seen this word written, as it may have muddled my initial impressions. In Welsh, feint means how much. Written, it is the same spelling as faint in English, which gives a very different form. Weint immediately gave me a bold, flat image of two wide lines going from left to right and from down to up and meeting at a right-hand corner point. 
I knew instantly this would be a square piece. It made me think of symbols and insignias. I knew I would set a stone at the top right point to highlight the conjunction of the lines. I tried out some metal patterners which did exactly what I wanted, gave bright colours, were durable but could be scratched or worn off. The piece has a double pin and is formed from a 10 by 10 centimetre sheet of silver. I set a blue-green party sapphire in 18 carat in the corner and the stone was chosen to contrast with the black, bright yellow and orange I'd chosen. This piece most reflects my core themes I return to in jewellery making. Jewellery that could have a past and that has been found. I wanted the piece to look like it had a history and been dug up or discovered. I beat and gouged the silver and wore the edges. I distressed the setting while ensuring it would remain strong. I scrubbed the patterner back then oxidised the whole piece. It felt so completely right when finished. Out of all 10 pieces, this is the one that is definitely going to have the most influence on the future direction my jewellery takes. Pabal. Pabal, meaning people, was the only piece where I could see how the word made the shape in my head, the plosive of puh giving me the soft exploding outward feeling and the bobbliness of the word as a whole. I knew I wanted soft ball shapes for this, plenty of them, differing in sizes and colour. This could be translated into pretty much any form of jewellery, so I opted for a bangle, something I don't often make. I wanted a strong skeleton, so I made a silver bangle with a tension clasp. Then I began needle felting, many, many, many small balls. Many. This piece I had to have help with. I needed to wet felt the balls once made, and I just can't cope with the feeling of wet wool, so my husband kindly provided the wet soapy hands needed. The balls were sewn together fairly randomly around the bangle. It's one of those pieces that you could go on forever adding and adding to, but I didn't want it to be any heavier or bulkier than it is now. I like how it is suggestive of the solidarity and separateness of people too. Pilly Pala the Welsh word for butterfly has me fluttering my fingers in front of my eyes. It has a gentle soft feel to it and I wanted to make a piece that encompassed both that soft feeling and that fluttering in front of the eyes. This was one of the more straightforward in terms of visualising the finished piece. I briefly considered a ring with moving parts that could be held up, but after making a test piece decided to make a sort of tiara. I'd make it with prongs to suspend something in front of the eyes. I needed something light enough to move in a breeze, and I considered using beaten very thin metal, but it wasn't right. I ended up using paper clay I shaped into thin petal-like forms. I painted the backs of them pastel colours and the underside with a mirror paint. They are suspended on nylon so they can move freely. The silver of the headpiece is oxidised to make it clear it's not the focus, and the pastels illustrate the softness of the wood and the mirroring catches the eye with any motion. Slythe. Slythe, meaning milk, is such a smooth and cool silky sounding word. It's a sleepy comforting word. I wanted to make a smooth, curvy, silky piece to echo it. I wanted an additional element to emphasise the comforting nature and decided to scent the piece. I formed a large dome of fine silver and cut out a gentle curve from the top. This was soldered to a flat base which I perforated with the lines of holes. I usually see a grid of dots when I close my eyes. Once filed and finished, I had a shallow hemispherical vessel, which I gave a satiny finish. I sewed reclaimed natural coloured sari silk to hang it, and on the advice of a perfumer friend, Sarah McCartney, I stuffed it with washed raw Welsh sheep wool. The wool can be scented with perfume, and it will hold the scent. The perfume I chose is a delicious vanilla custard based scent by Sarah's company, Smelling vanilla has been linked with the production of endorphins, so it's the perfect companion scent for this piece. Goobod. Goobod is a great word that's fun to say. It means to know. I immediately saw a pouchy shape with a mouth. It feels sort of creepy to me, a bit sinister. I knew this had to be a cast piece as I wanted it to be durable and look a little organic. I took a quail egg and blew the egg out. I then repeatedly dipped the eggshell into melted jeweler's wax. I ended up with a hen's egg sized alien looking dripping form. I spent a happy day paring back the wax with a curved scalpel as I needed it to be light enough to be feasibly cast into metal. I cut a mouth into it and carved it loosely to look like a lip. I scrubbed the surface with a wire brush for a contrast in texture. I decided on a long hanging pendant as I wanted it to have a spooky talismanic kind of feel. When I was cutting holes to pass a chain through it, I thought it'd be fun to have optional additions to it that would change the meaning, so I cut an extra hole. I had one cast in silver and a few in brass so I could experiment and give them different finishes. The silver I gave a brushed back oxidised finish. Inside I applied some intense glow in the dark pigment which gives the perfect eeriness. There is a piece that can be inserted that simply caps the hole called dim that changes the piece to meaning know nothing and there is another with a large rainbow stripe felt ball called poppeth changing the meaning to know everything. Thank you.
Thank you. 